Red bugs are ancient insects, and they have lived off hosts since time began. With the growth of civilization, bed bugs multiplied. During the Industrial Age, late 18th century onward, bed bug populations exploded throughout Europe. By the 1930s, an entomologist reported that one third of the inhabitants of London were living in bed bug infested quarters. Fifty years ago, bed bugs had been all but wiped out. However, since the 1980s, there's been a sharp resurgence. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this has happened partly because bed bugs have become resistant to some pesticides. Today, many pest control experts consider bed bugs to be the number one infestation problem in the U.S. These infestations were not limited to the less expensive establishments. They began showing up in premium hotels, single family homes, apartments, hospitals, and in nursing homes. Knowing what to look for is the first step in identifying and controlling bed bugs. Adult bed bugs in general are about the size of an apple seed, long and brown with a flat, oval shaped body, if not recently fed, balloon like, reddish brown, and more elongated, if recently fed, and smelly with a musty Swedish odor produced through glands on the lower side of the body. So the way you try to find bed bugs yourself is to look for three things. You're gonna, of course, look for the live bug. So the live bug is about the size of an apple seed that looks almost maybe it's a tick. The other things you're gonna look for is its skin casing. So bed bugs shed their skin, just like a snake will when they grow. So bed bugs will shed their skin about three to four times before they become reproductive adults. So once they get to reproductive adults, that's when they start having their babies. And then you wanna start looking for their eggs and their feces stains. So when a bed bug feeds, they will also poop. And those poop stains look like felt marker pressed against the sheet. So that's what you're gonna look for when you're looking for bed bugs. Temperature affects the growth and spread of bed bugs. Under ideal conditions, it takes about 35 to 45 days for an egg to mature into an adult. Bed bugs are a nesting parasite that hide near where people and pets rest and sleep. Bed bugs feed on the blood of humans. The critters become engorged with blood in about 10 minutes, which fills them up for days. Bed bugs do not like light and they will hide during the day, coming out to feed at night. And the female will go off and lay four to seven eggs every day. So those four to seven eggs are cemented in where she laid those eggs. So it's very hard for those eggs to be moved. So those little eggs look like little white pieces of rice, really small. You can see them, but you have to have like a trained eye to really see those eggs. They usually lay them in cracks and crevices. So you have to be careful to make sure that you look at those to find the eggs in that uh, infestation. So once they hatch out, they become nymphs. And nymphs are very microscopic. They're, they're really hard to see with the naked eye. But until they feed, then you can see them because they now have the blood of their host in them and they're easier to see. Bed bugs will remain in the nymph phase for five rounds of molting. Each time they molt, they shed their old shell and a new one hardens. Eventually, they achieve their adult size of about 5.5 millimeters. So we're looking at the size of the skin casings to let us know what stage of instar that they're in to let us know if they're reproductive or not. And then that's when you start having babies and the population can spread. It takes about 50 to 60 days for a baby bed bug to reach sexual maturity, at which point it will begin to lay eggs of its own. Finally, the bed bug will die of natural causes if left to thrive sometime within a year. Bed bugs are spread very easily. They are the hide and seek champions of the world. So bed bugs will hitch a ride in your purse, on your shoes, on clothing, anything in a suitcase, anything that you can leave behind, sit down. You can sit down on something and carry bed bugs back home. Most bed bugs may be found within eight feet of a person's resting place. As the infestation grows, bed bugs will spread further. Bed bugs are always on the move, so an infestation must be tackled head on. Bed bugs will move between apartment units. In fact, an infestation next door may be the source of the infestation in the unit that is being treated. 
If you truly intend to control a bed bug infestation, it is absolutely essential that the units on either side and the units above and below be inspected for bed bugs at two week intervals over the next four weeks. You want to look for, of course, live bugs. Live bugs can be seen with the naked eye, especially at reproductive adults. Um, you want to look for skin casings, and you also want to look for the feces stains that they leave behind. When not feeding, bed bugs hide in a variety of places. Around the bed, they can be found near the piping, seams, and tags of the mattress and box spring, and in cracks on the bed frame and headboard. If the room is heavily infested, you may find bed bugs in the seams of chairs and couches, between cushions, and in the folds of curtains, in drawer joints, in electrical receptacles and appliances, under loose wallpaper and wall hangings, at the junction where the wall and the ceiling meet, and even in the head of a screw. Bed bugs can bite anywhere on the body where there is skin. Typically, bites tend to occur on areas exposed during sleeping, such as the neck, face, hands, shoulders, arms, and legs. Many people do not feel the bite itself or develop clear symptoms other than the dots where the bug bit and some minor surrounding inflammation and irritation. Almost all bed bug bites will produce some degree of discomfort, typically itchiness and inflammation. Be proactive. Develop a written bed bug action plan in advance of problems being identified. A plan should include specific procedures and responsibilities for responding to a bed bug incident, including getting residents to prepare properly for service, reducing the risk of bed bug spread to other areas, and cooperating with the pest management professional, managing relocation requests, and make sure bed bug control service is provided by a qualified professional experienced with bed bugs in apartments. The effectiveness of chemical treatment depends on getting to the bed bugs. Unlike heat, chemical treatment is site specific. Treatment typically therefore happens over multiple visits to be sure no bed bugs are missed. We're not just applying chemical, we're also applying steam. That's why we have a difference between wet, wet heat and dry heat. Steam is used from water through a steamer, which actually heats up to about 300 degrees. Bed bugs die at 100, 120 degrees exposed for one minute. So if we use steam at 300 degrees, bed bugs would die a whole lot quicker than that one minute because the temperature is a lot higher. So we use uh, steam to go after eggs and bugs and cracks and crevices where we can actually get to. Um, also with our chemical treatment, we use vacuuming. So we want to actually take the bugs out of the situation physically. Bug Tech then conducts extensive chemical treatment. We apply insecticidal dust to the electrical outlets, execute our crack and crevice treatment, and apply liquid chemical treatment. After a first treatment, checkups are scheduled two weeks apart. If there is evidence of live bed bugs or eggs, treatment will begin again. Two weeks later, we'll involve another checkup. This process continues every two weeks until we are confident there are no live bugs and no more bites. BugTech is one of the few pest control companies in Lubbock to offer whole house heat treatment as an effective solution against bed bugs. On the day of the treatment, we will arrive several hours before heating to install encasements on the beds and box springs, as well as blackouts on each sleeping area. These steps prevent the bed bugs from migrating during heating. Once the equipment is in place, we begin pumping heat into the house. As the house heats up, our team will constantly take temperatures in each room. The heat is actually going into your house at 200 degrees. So we need the ambient air temperature to hit about 140 to 160 degrees to be effective for bed bug killing. Uh, bed bugs die at 120 degrees exposed for one minute. So that's gonna kill all life cycles, the adult, the nymphs, and the eggs. The beauty of heat is that unlike chemicals, it gets everywhere. No matter how many layers of bedding or clothing a bed bug is hiding under, the heat can reach and destroy it. They can run, but they can't hide. 